Hey guys, it's Sonny, it's Heck Outside. So, I've been looking at different cars, and I had a pretty bad experience uh, looking at what I really wanted. I really wanted a Mazda Speed 6, the um, Grand Touring model, the uh, all-wheel drive. But, anyway, I went and looked at it uh, last Thursday, and um, I didn't get to test drive it because it was... Uh, Sorry guys, this is so bright, so screw this. I look like a douche. Anyway, I can't find my good sunglasses. Anyway, so I went and looked at it last Thursday and uh I didn't get to look at the engine, the interior, I didn't get to drive it, nothing like that. I literally just got to look at the outside of it. And then I went up there Tuesday and he was going to let me test drive it, and I got the key, and he was busy, so, you know, he gave me, like, he gave me the key, and was like, you know, go ahead, look it over, whatever you want to do. I'm like, I just want to look at the engine. So, it was complete trash. Uh, engine mounts were completely rusted. Intercooler piping had holes in it. There was no air filter on the intercooler. Turbo was leaking. I mean, it was just a lot of bullshit. <laughs> So, I'm going to show y'all how to, like, look at a car. Or at least how I look at a car whenever I'm buying and, you know, looking at cars. Inside of my car looks like shit right now because I haven't cleaned it. But, I mean, come on. Y'all y'all know what y'all are looking for cosmetically and, you know, interior-wise. So, I'm not going to go over that boring stuff of, oh, look at the seats and see if they've been, you know, treated properly. And, I mean, y'all y'all know how to do that, surely. And y'all know how to be like, oh, look, it's got clear coat. Yeah. So, this is going to be more of the engine side of it, okay? Okay. So, this is what you really want to be looking at right now. Or at least, the engine is what I look at. I look at the engine before I even test drive it. First thing you're going to want to do is check your oil. Now, a lot of people are going to fill up their oil before they um, show the car. And that's fine. Still check it. Make sure it's, you know, full. Also, don't forget to do this. This little trick right here is what will save you from buying a car with a blown head gasket. You see how that... See how you can't see, like, milky brown shit on my oil? That's because I don't have a blown head gasket. If you see, like, it looks like chocolate milk, <clears throat> step away from the car and drive somewhere else. Because it has a bad head gasket. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that. Um, also, these things right here are called engine mounts. Look at them. Mine, a little rubber seal isn't busted. It's not rusted through. No surface rust at all. Look at these. These are holding your engine up. You really need to look at those. Also down there, right here, is the serpentine belt. Check it out, look for any kind of cracks, damage, anything like that. This right here is where they splice it together, that's stapled. That's supposed to be like that. But look for any like strands or anything like that. Because if these things break and someone continues to try and crank it and drive it, is you looking at um, a bearing span. Third thing, look at the air filter. This is a bitch to get off, so I don't ever really take it off. But <clears throat> look at the air filter. See how dirty it is. See if somebody's actually cared enough to change the um, air filter. I changed mine about two months ago. You usually change them like every other um, old change, so like every, every six months or so. I changed mine like two, three months ago, somewhere like that. <clears throat> Another thing is... This car has multiple fuses, so look at all the fuses, um, like fuse boxes, I'm sorry. I got like one right here, I got like two up at the front, and then I got one on the inner door. I'm just showing you this. Look at the fuse box. And also look at your diagram. Just kind of make sure everything is lining up. What it is, is if you look right there, you see all them numbers and stuff? That signifies what's on here, okay? Or what should be on there. So check it. Another thing you want to do. 
shake the battery real good make sure it's held down i mean obviously look my hands literally on nothing more than the battery and i'm kind of no it's hard to see but i'm shaking the whole car pretty much the battery's down good i do have some aftermarket stuff in here so that's just i mean this is just running like gauges and stuff um look for any kind of corrosion on the battery i mean this can be easily fixed just sand it off real good so aside from looking at the old engine mount serpentine belt uh if you've got a power steering belt or a um, water pump belt look at that too um battery fuses stuff like that another thing you're gonna have to kind of if you can get down underneath the car and look at the exhaust what you're gonna want to do is this is an aftermarket exhaust obviously is just look over here look for any kind of holes in the exhaust you can also find these whenever you crank it up for your test drive you can um put your foot in the exhaust and um it will uh you'll be able to find the exhaust leak a lot sooner but um anyway look underneath the car make sure it's not like leaking crap and like my car is actually pretty decently clean underneath here I always kind of look at the CV axle um, boots and stuff. Just look at them. Make sure they're not like torn or anything like that. We're talking about this little, uh, God, what they call them. Um, it's an instrument. What the heck is it? These things right here. Look at these. Make sure they're not like torn or anything like that. You don't want like excess fluid like dripping from these i mean this is what turns your wheel look at the inner sides of the wheel the outer sides are always going to look pretty decent inner sides because a lot of cars have um camber even from the factory look at these inner sides check your water coolant pretty easy to do just look down there and shake it and make sure it's on the fill so, aside from this, pretty much everything else is kind of up to you. If you want to bring a jack, jack up the wheel, and, you know, like, shake it around, make sure the um, wheel hub's good, more power to you. If you want to put your hand on a fender and shake it and see if, you know, you can really move the car, see if it's got a blown strut, do it. But as for cosmetics, I mean, you can you can obviously see clear coat filling. This actually isn't a hole that size. It's just I put that over there. Duct tape all over the back glass because somebody slit this piece of shit. I mean, you know, you can obviously see all this stuff. So, you know, keep in mind, cosmetics are a good bit of the sale. When I look at a car, cosmetics are going to be about 50% of the sale for me. And then it's going to be how it runs. And that really should be how it is. It shouldn't be, oh, well, you know, cosmetics are 100% of the sale. Because if you don't have a good car, a good running car, it makes no sense to buy it. You know, if it looks good, it doesn't run good. But... But anyway, like, I don't care about cosmetics, so I'm a little bit different, I guess. But if a car has, like, new radiator, new serpentine belt, new alternator, new water pump, if it's got a new AC condenser, if it's got this, that, you know, pretty much everything is new on the car, and he's got receipts for it, then, I mean, if it's got clear-cut pill and it's a good price and you feel comfortable paying that, go ahead. I mean, keep in mind, if you're trying to make money on these cars, like, I don't really buy a car like, oh, I'm going to buy this and flip this. It's literally, I buy it, I'm like, I'm going to do this, 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 and this to it. And then, when I get done with this, 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 and this, I usually either sell it, or I always sell it, never mind. Because I've never kept a car after I finished doing what I wanted to do to it. So... I don't know. 
if you're looking to flip a car, you gotta have a different mindset. If you're looking to flip a car, look at it and be like, okay, if I wanted to buy this and actually drive it, how much would I pay for this? And just being honest, that car, I figure I could sell it and make a decent profit. The RX-8 I got, oh my god, I bought that sucker for like two grand. And I was like, okay, I can easily, sorry, easily sell this thing for four. Well, I advertised it as a trade only for a truck. And then some guy called me. He's like, what do you want cash? And I'm like, eh, give me five grand. He's like, I can do 4,800. I said, all right, come pick it up. He's like, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. I mean, same thing with my uh, Mitsubishi Spider GT. I bought it. I hated that car. I bought it, and I was like, I bought it for like 3200 I said, I bet I can sell it for like 3500 And I did. I sold it for 3500 So, you know, if you're wanting, if you know you are going to eventually, like if you know you're not going to keep it a very long time, like I know I'm not keeping my cars a very long time. That is the longest car I've ever kept, and it's going to be a year to 26th of February. And I wanted to keep that car because that car is a naturally aspirated engine that is way too small, has no power. It's got a decent layout. I mean, it is a midship. It's just I can do so much more of that car, so I'm not really wanting to flip it. I'm wanting to build it, which is why I didn't care about the top being shit or the paint being shit. I looked at the motor mounts, they were good. I looked at the engine, they, it was really good. So, you look for different things when you're doing different stuff. But just keep in mind, cosmetics to me aren't really anything. You can fix cosmetic issues like real easily. I mean, I sprayed this crap on there today on the plastic dip because the back's always like, the back was completely trashed. On that car now paint it black plastic dip and it looks you know decently better it doesn't look like a show car and then this was at Walmart for like 250 so I bought it and sprayed it on there and it looks like a lot better but anyway you get where I'm coming from with this just do what you want to your car and buy the car that you want to buy but also don't go in there I want this car because you can be disappointed. I was extremely disappointed at Mazda Speed 6. I wanted to buy a Mazda Speed 6, but you don't go in there with cash in hand ready to give it to the man. You go in there and you thoroughly check it out, you look at it, and then you decide if it's worth it. At Mazda Speed 6, it was not worth it. Not worth it at all. I mean, Turbo bad, yeah. We can replace the turbo. Engine mount's bad, a little bit harder to do, but yeah, we can we can do it. Um, new engine mounts. Whenever I saw there was no filter on the intake, and I saw how much grit and grime were inside that intake, eh -eh. I was done. I'm like that grit and grime has probably made its way through the turbo which is probably why it's leaking into the heads I mean be smart when you're looking at cars um don't just hop in it and go for a drive for a test drive look at it first and really that's kind of to protect you too if you look at the car and you notice something's wrong with it and you point it out to the um to the owner and you go for a test drive and something bad happens like I mean if I would have blew that turbo and it would have started making blue smoke, then the guy would have been looking at me like, why'd you just break my car? And I'd be like, uh, I was just driving it. It would have caused an issue, but um, I didn't even take it for a drive. I saw that and I was like, here's your keys back. Bye. But anyway, that's what I look, like, look for in a car. Um, mainly the engine stuff. I mean, if you're buying a um convertible or well, if you're buying any other car, 
yeah there's other things to look at um look at the gaps and like the doors and the fenders make sure that they are um kind of close together you don't want like the door touching at the top but you know this wide at the bottom because that means it's probably been in an accident and it's twisted a little bit but aside from that stuff it's really just cosmetic issues that either you can fix or you honestly don't care enough to fix so uh, just keep that in mind you may have a different way of doing it that's my way of doing it but uh this Saturday is one year with the car. I'm going to take it to Cars and Coffee with me, and I'm probably going to do a one-year um, review of that car, um, what it's like actually living with it for a year. And uh, sorry about not posting Thursday or Tuesday. It's just I was busy with that Mazda Speed 3, I mean that Mazda Speed 6, and uh, this didn't feel like filming because honestly it was just kind of crazy but um i'm ahead of class and i'll see you guys saturday